Welcome to Nicholas LMX12. Today I'm looking at the EVGA GeForce GTX Titan X Superclocked graphics card. Yes, I am totally aware the new NVIDIA Pascal GPUs are out by now, but I've only gotten the chance to thoroughly test the Titan X by the end of April this year, and well, obviously I haven't been able to release this review in time. This review makes very little sense, I know that myself, but I've promised I'd release this video and I don't break my promises. Let's treat this video as an update with the latest drivers and whether or not it's worth it to pick a used Titan X up for a good price or not if you manage to find one. Currently this Titan X costs somewhere around 1200 to 1300 US dollars new, but I wouldn't recommend buying one new now at that price. Thank you so much Christopher Fort Wengler, also known as TNT199, for not only sending, lending me one Titan X, but two. So make sure to not miss my upcoming video with two of these bad boys is running in SLI. Unfortunately, I can't show you what this graphics card comes with in terms of accessories, since Christopher didn't have the possibility sending me the original packaging. But what matters here is the card itself. The EVGA GTX Titan X Superclocked sports the powerful GM200 GPU by Nvidia, just like its smaller brother, the 980 Ti does for instance. What truly stands out in this graphics card is the large amount of VRAM, a whopping 12GB of GDDR5 video memory, at a bus width of 384-bit. As the name Super Superclocked already suggests, EVJ has factory overclocked the GPU with the base clock being 1127 MHz, the boost at 1216 MHz and the memory at 1753 MHz, 7010 MHz effectively. The TDP is at about 250 watts and the Titan X is based on the 28 nanometer manufacturing process. DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.5, OpenCL 1.2, as well as Shader Model 5.0 are all supported APIs. PCI Express 3.0 is the interface here. Aesthetically, the GTX Titan X is a very beautiful and appealing graphics card to me and surely many other enthusiasts. Other than the related GTX 980 Ti, the Titan X is only available in its original reference design in black by Nvidia. So manufacturers such as EVGA in this case don't have much room for changes and tweaking of the PCB other than simple factory overclocks. The graphics card makes a very elegant, exclusive and expensive impression. Given its price being over $1,000 that does not really come in as a surprise. Despite being one of the most expensive high-end cards in market right now, the Titan X is equipped with a blower style radial fan which is the way to go when installing such a GPU in a small form factor case with limited airflow. The PCB color is black, just as would wish for but at such a premium price tag, I'm really wondering why Nvidia decided not to implement a metal backplate for extra protection and aesthetic impression. The green GeForce GTX LED logo on the side lights up nicely. To power this GPU up, one PCIe 6 pin as well as one PCIe 8 pin power connector is required. Up to four of these cards can run in SLI, so up to four way SLI. As for video outputs, one DVI, three DisplayPort outputs, as well as a single HDMI output. The Titan X measures in at a length of about 26.7 centimeters. So the GTX Titan X truly is a beauty of a graphics card on the outside, but what kind of performance does it deliver especially with its 12 gigabytes of VRAM? To find that out, we'll first run through 1080p benchmarks, right after that 2160p 4K ones.
The EVGA Titan X is a great performer, but as most of us know, it's not really any different than a decent GTX 980 Ti in terms of raw performance. Sure, the Titan X does come with double the amount of VRAM a 980 Ti comes with, 12GB in total, but in 2016, I don't think we need something as extreme as this yet. Sure, modern games do tend to eat up lots of video memory, but if we choose our graphics settings wisely, and not put everything at the ultimate maximum just to brag with these silly settings, well, we get great frame rates in-game. At such a steep price tag, you'd hope for a card that is capable of running games at the 4K screen resolution. The Titan X is indeed capable of doing so, but with the more powerful new Pascal GPUs out there, this card doesn't appear as powerful anymore. We've all known since the beginning of Nvidia's Titan series of graphics cards, it's never really worth it for long. In this case, for instance, the GTX 980 Ti is the much, much better choice. Being available in a non-reference design improves temperatures, often noise as well, even though I wouldn't consider the reference design to be that loud either and most of the time, more performance. The GTX 980 Ti, as you saw in the charts, is as good or even better in some cases as the expensive Titan X. Gigabyte's G1 gaming design, however, is a very power-hungry version of the 980 Ti with massive overclocks. So the Titan X might shine with its 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but at the end of the day, it doesn't get you anywhere. You're better off with the 980 Ti again, unless you don't do VRAM-hungry 3D rendering and stuff like that. Because that's where the 12 gigabytes come in handy. So to sum things up, don't get me wrong, the GTX Titan X is an impressive card, even now, but with the more affordable, great-performing GTX 980 Ti being around, and now even the new Pascal GPUs, it makes only very little sense getting this card for your system. If you happen to find a good deal on it though, maybe ideally with the same or similar price tag as a used 980 Ti, sure, go for it. From a technical point of view, a very good graphics card, but as of now, not really a card worth of picking up new. Once again, huge thanks go out to Christopher Fortwangler, also known as TNT199, for sending me his Titan Axis. Next up, these two bad boys in SLI. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to sometimes see videos there earlier.